big hands or little. Everyone's job is really important on a big schooner. During the summer months, the Lee family makes the heritage their home. Sailing is their way of life. is what ships looked like 100 years ago. And standing on this deck, it's easy to slip back in time. Imagine, you're at the wheel of a tall ship. No radar, no radio, no engine. You're caught out on a day much worse than this. A wild down east gale, winds whipping from stem to stern, waves as tall as treetops. You search for the one sign that would save you from disaster. A lighthouse. These waters echo with tales of brave sailors weathering the stormy seas. And here's one, the true story of a courageous girl who kept her lighthouse burning and became a legend in her own time. It's called Keep the Lights Burning, Abby. Keep the Lights Burning, Abby, by Peter and Connie Roop. Pictures by Peter E. Hansen. Read by Seda Thompson. Abby looked out the lighthouse window. Waves washed up on the rocks below. Out at sea, a ship sailed safely by. Will you sail to town today, Papa? Abby asked. Yes, Captain Burgess answered. Mama needs medicine. The lights need oil. We need food. The weather is good now, so it's safe to go out in Puffin. But what if you don't get back today? Asked Abby. Who will take care of the lights? Papa smiled. You will, Abby. Oh, no, Papa, said Abby. I have never done it alone. You've trimmed the wicks before, said Papa. You've cleaned the lamps and put in the oil. You must keep the lights burning, Abby. Many ships count on our lighthouses. She and Papa walked down to the shore. Their little boat, Puffin, pulled on its rope. Keep the lights burning, Abby, her father said. I will, Papa, Abby promised, but the wind carried off her words as Puffin slid out to sea. She knew Papa was a fine sailor, but if the wind blew up again, he could not sail back to Botanicus Rock today. Then she would have to care for the lights. Abby walked to the house. Esther opened the door. It's a good thing Papa went today. Mama needs medicine, and we're running out of food. And we must be careful, said Abby. If there is another storm, Papa will not get back today. Outside, the sky turned gray. The wind put white caps on the waves. Another winter storm was coming. When the sun went down, Abby put on her coat. She had to light the lamps. Abby ran up the lighthouse steps. She knew Papa could not sail back. Abby was afraid. What if she could not light the lamps? She picked up a box of matches. Her hands were shaking. She struck a match and held the match near the wick of the first lamp. The wick glowed. One by one, she lit all the lamps. Out at sea, a ship saw the lights. It steered away from the dangerous rocks. That night, the wind blew hard. Abby could not sleep. She kept thinking about the lights, 
What if they went out? A ship might crash. Abby got out of bed. She climbed the lighthouse steps. It was a good thing she had come. There was ice on the windows. The lights could not be seen. All night long, she scraped ice off the windows. She checked each light. Not one went out. For over a week, the wind and rain roared. For a while, the family had to move into one of the strong towers. One morning, water ran under the door. My chickens, Abby cried. They'll be washed away. Abby ran out into the rain. She grabbed her chickens. Just then, she heard another big wave coming. It sounded like a train. Abby raced to the tower. Open the door, she yelled. Lydia opened the door. Abby ran inside. Oh, look, the sea is coming. The girls pushed the door shut. Then the wave hit it. Abby felt the lighthouse shake. She was shaking, too. They had shut the door just in time. Day after day, it snowed or rained. Abby wished it would stop. She was tired of the wind. She was tired of the waves. She was tired of climbing the lighthouse steps. And she was tired of eggs. The only thing left to eat was eggs, and Abby was sick of them. Then, one morning, the waves seemed smaller. The sky was not so black. The wind didn't blow so hard. Late that afternoon, the girls heard a voice outside. It was Papa. They ran to help him carry the boxes. There was medicine for Mama. There was oil for the lamps. There was mail, and there was food. And there was corn for Abby's chickens. I was afraid for you, said Papa. Every night I watched for the lights. Every night I saw them. Then I knew you were all right. Abby smiled. I kept the lights burning, Papa. I kept them burning. Lots of things have changed since Abby kept her lights burning on Matinicus Rock. Lighthouses still dot the coast of Maine, doing the same job they did over 100 years ago. Owl's Head Light sits atop a jagged cliff overlooking the rocks. Hey, Andy! Andy Gurman is the lighthouse keeper here at Owl's Head for the United States Coast Guard. Let's go up top and take a look around. So this is it, huh? The inside of a lighthouse. Hi, Andy. Hi, Lavard. Come on up. Thanks. Boy, oh boy. You know what this looks like? It reminds me of something that you would see on the deck of a spaceship, you know, in a science fiction movie? Yeah, it is very different. Real futuristic. Well, how does it work, Andy? Well, let me show you. Wow, I guess you need two bulbs to get a beam that strong, huh? Not really. It only takes one. The second one is in case the first one burns out. And when the first one burns out, it switches to the second one. Huh. Does it do that automatically, or does somebody have to come up here and switch it like you just did? It does it automatically. Really? Now, Andy, I know that every lighthouse has its own signal. What's the signal of this lighthouse? This particular lighthouse is a fixed white light. Fixed white light. It's stationary, and it's just a constant, like a regular lamp in your house. Well, how powerful are these bulbs? These particular bulbs are 1,000 watts. 1,000 watts. That's about 10 times as strong as the living room light at home. That's right, but they really don't do all the work. It's the lens that does the work. Let me show you. Go ahead and take a look through the lens. OK. Can you see my face all distorted? Yeah, it looks all long and... That's the lens bending the light into the center. 
I see. Well, what is the rest of the light made of? Well, the rest of the light is made out of different prisms and reflects all the light into the middle. Let me show you. Okay. So you can see here, we have a set of prisms up here. And these prisms reflect the light that would go to the ceiling back into the middle. Ah. And these prisms reflect the light that would go down to the floor back into the center. And it all goes out concentrated out to sea. 